going and seeing some of what has gone viral. And so those are the inspiration for my two recipes today. So um, my first one that I'm gonna start making is the Green Goddess Salad. That's a more um, recent one. I think, I'm trying, I can't remember the date of when it first showed up, but it was, oh, I don't remember, it was this winter or whatnot that it, it first showed up, or maybe it was late 2021. But the pesto eggs, I feel like have been around for maybe about a year. I think so, maybe in the spring of 2021, those came around. So the green goddess is not green goddess dressing. It's green No, and it's actually, I'm actually salad. glad. Yeah, so I'm actually glad you said that because the green goddess, I will have to tell you, was one of the first recipes that really piqued my interest. Um, because being from the years that we grew up, there was a definite trend in the 70s, I think, where green goddess salad dressing... Yeah. Um, I remember if you my want, mom making it. Yeah. Um, if you want to get that beat before us. It, yep. uh, yeah, I'm sorry. He's going to be right back. So we're finishing up some laundry today. Um, and we have got to turn the buzzer off. But um, but yeah, so Andy was just saying that he remembers his mom making it. And I, I believe my mom made the dressing. If not, she would have purchased the dressing. It was definitely a popular dressing in the 70s. Um, and and I've seen a little bit of Green Goddess revisited like from other chefs over the years. I would say maybe over the past 10 years, I've heard it pop up in a kind of a nostalgia way. And maybe that's something we'll do this summer during one of our nostalgia cooking Good streams. Maybe we'll make a, a homemade Green Goddess dressing. One of the ingredients I do know that's in the original Green Goddess dressing, because um, it's a creamier dressing and it does have a, a light green, um, I think it's tarragon, yeah. um, which not everyone Okay. Not everyone is a big tarragon person, and for me, I um, I probably learned to appreciate more. So I don't even know if I liked Green Goddess dressing back in the day. Do you remember? If you I liked don't. It? I don't remember. Yeah, I really don't remember anything about it. I just remember <laughs> the name. So, anyways, with this recipe, the Green Goddess salad, um, the inspiration for calling it Green Goddess, I think, from looking at the original TikToker is because number one, everything that's going in it is green, basically, um, except for the lemon juice, because lemons are yellow, and there's a couple other color disparities. And anyways, that's one of the reasons she called it Green Goddess. And I think also it's nice because it's a very healthy recipe. It actually um, is a vegan recipe. Huh. And the uh, person that started it, she ate it with chips. Now, because we're pairing it with pesto eggs, we're gonna have it more as a side because um, it's a great counterpart getting some veg in with the pesto eggs. It's really, so. You're wearing green and I'm wearing green. We are. It was planned. It was totally planned. That's why you told me to wear this shirt. That is actually not. I wasn't thinking that far ahead. I, I'd love to take credit for the fact of thinking like that. So we're going to start right into the green goddess salad. So I've what I've already done is I've already started chopping up some cabbage. And in the recipe, it talks about I'm using a small head of cabbage and chopping it all up pretty fine. And what I noticed is, is immediately as a cook, when you see something like small, medium, large, you wonder about kind of quantity. So I determined that the cabbage that, can you pass me that cabbage half right there? The cabbage I got was, um, but two of these was quite a decent size. And then after chopping up, um, a quarter of it, I decided that half of this is going to be just fine. So I'm going to just finish chopping up the other half. And the reason I wanted to show this was because, in fact, I'll go to camera setting um, of the webcam here. The reason I wanted to show it was because one of the things she did was talk about a way for the home cook to kind of get it finely diced in a fairly easy way. And of course, you know that the best thing to do is have a really good knife because um, the sharper the knife, the less chance of getting cut. But the first thing you want to do is just thinly slice it one way. So I'm just going to run it across and just slice it about as thin as I can this way. And you'll see what I do when I get towards the end. Being careful not to chop yourself. I would slice my finger off. Yes. Well, I mean, I think you would, you just might do it a little slower. And there is no race, so really for any of the cooks at home, you just want to do it at your speed. By the way, if you like content like this and you like cooking streams, make sure and follow, follow my channel. Um, and for any updates about our content, about schedule changes, which we've had a few in the past couple of weeks because I had had COVID. Um, so, you know, make sure and follow me on Philly Philly Twitter, and it's the handle is at Philly Philly Live. And that helps keep you up to date on everything. 
And also, if you like any of the videos, make sure you like them. And I would love you to comment below if you're watching. Please tell us you're here. We love to interact with who joins us. So you can see I sliced it all the one way. And then all you do is just rotate it and run your knife the opposite way. And then you can look for like bigger chunks and you can run a knife back over that. But that's the easiest way. Let me get some back here. That's the easiest way. And look, you can just rotate your cooking, your cutting board to get the smaller dice. It's a lot of cabbage. It's a lot of cabbage. Is it going to fit in that bowl? Yep. I rely on Andy for bringing any of the pessimism to the table of like any of the doubt that I'm going to have when I'm doing any of my cooking. Love them to pieces. We are a great counterpoint by that because you would, just... you would definitely say that I am like an eternal optimist and you bring large doses of reality into my world and I, I bring just... and I bring large doses of hope into yours, right? I'm just here to add stress. <laughs> He's a guy that when we're like going to go eat at a restaurant, and this is back when we lived in the suburbs where you drove everywhere, now we just we walk our Uber places. But we would we would get up to the parking lot and he's like, Oh, we're never gonna get in. Oh, we're gonna be waiting hours. And and so we'd go, so we'd be all stressed, and I'd go up to the um to the host and say, How long's the wait? And she's like, Oh, about 20 minutes. I'm like, okay. So but it's just funny. He, he's uh he has you have an interesting perspective, my love. So actually if you could just make sure that doesn't tip, tip off, I'm just gonna put this into the bowl. There we go. So you can see that was really easy. Um, I know when I was a cook in the early days, things like that could kind of daunt me. And and most as most chefs would agree, if you could put it kind of back by the microphone there, as most chefs would agree, sometimes, honestly, I feel like the prep, nope, I got it. The prep is the hardest, not the hardest part, but I think it intimidates because it just requires work, right? But I think um, I was watching, I love watching chefs cook. So I follow a lot um, personally, and I love watching cooking shows and all that is, you know, a lot of people that cook find it therapeutic. You know, what do you find therapeutic that you do, by the way? Mr. Egg. Mr. Egg. Yep. Um. Let me hear my recipe. Okay. Oh, and I can take this off here. Wait a second, friends. Oh, goodness. There we go. Let's get back to the regular camera scene. What I'll do you back find? To you on that. Oh. <laughs> well, did, when we, back in the day, did you ever find um, the yard work therapeutic or no? I did. That's actually a good one. Yeah, that was therapeutic because it was mindless. I didn't have to think about anything, especially okay. when I was just cutting the yard. Okay. Running sometimes is therapeutic for me. But that's not really work. That's a, I mean, it's work, but it's not like a chore. Like I was wondering chores. Oh, chores? Yeah, more like that. And by the way, what I'm doing right now You're is good. I am just um, small, just finely dicing a, compu a computer. <laughs> Aren't these beautiful computers? A cucumber. It's an um, cucumber. They, I, I, and I think she did the same thing in her video. You know, one of the things, there's so many cucumbers I like to buy. and. I'm old school. I will say I really love the flavor of like the original um, cucumbers. I think, yeah, you bring, that'd be great. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to make this easy. You can keep it back over there because I'm just going to get them cut and then I'll add them. Uh, um, by the way, so all I'm doing here is I'm taking off, and you probably don't need to take off the ends, but I kind of micromanage at that point. And then I'm just slicing it and then slicing it into uh, other what do you call it? Um, it's okay, because I'm going to bring the camera down for my next one. Um, anyway, just slicing it further into like little strips, like this, and then I'm just dicing those. So in the recipe, she said three to four. Um, and since I'm doing a little, I wasn't sure if I'm doing a little bit less cabbage, so I decided to just settle on three. But whatever, what I love about this recipe, and, and actually for many, savory recipes that don't involve baking and stuff it really is to your liking and honestly i was thinking with this another green vegetable that would be great in this personally because i really like it i think zucchini and i love eating raw zucchini so i think honestly it's kind of using what's in your fridge um but so i'm going to show you kind of now what so how many times here. how many times have you chopped your finger when you're chopping vegetables like that 
Well, it's fortunate that I've never chopped my finger. I've cut my finger for sure. Um, I don't know. And I'm trying to think of what I was chopping where I cut it. I feel like for me, when I usually cut myself, is a slip. It, it, like they say, it's, it's the slipping. So when your knife slips, I think that gives you the best chance of cutting yourself. Now, I do notice on the TV shows and the cooking streams I watch, the people that are trained, they do this whole thing with their fingers yeah, where they so hold it like that so that the knife goes against the knuckles. Right. And I know if I really concentrate on it, here, I'll you, if I really concentrate on it, I could teach myself how to do that. Um, but it's more the patience of doing that if I'm being totally honest. And I think what's hard, and, and I probably will do that someday because I know it would make it safer for when I'm, when I am cooking. Um, but I just think that it's hard because we're creatures of habit, you know? Yeah, sure. And see, I hate it. when you're right and you're right. Like that is going to be when I get the, but it's just the onions. Wait, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Just take it. Let's take her. All right, and then the last thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this and then I'll put the camera back up, is I'm just taking some green onions and I'm chopping those small. Do you need this? Not yet. So I will, full disclosure, let you know that I'm doing some substitutions because I, you know, I don't know if any other cooks have this happen. You think you've got everything. You're like, oh yeah, I've got that, or I will have that after the grocery store. And I think all these things, and then sometimes they don't come true. So that um, that's where I think his realism hits home. In fact, I would have to say that one of the things you do a lot with me is you'll say, before we have like a big meal with company, you'll say, is there anything you need? And I'm like, no, we're fine. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I forgot the heavy cream. Can you run out and get it? And he is lived with me a long time we've been married a long time and um you've done many of those runs have you not i have so sure enough with this there were a couple of those oopsie moments too but what i like about this recipe so i i will say full disclosure i'm not going to be using the exact ingredients that she used but on the other hand i will say that this and she mentions it even um because she was on the today show actually yeah. talking and showing uh showing this recipe and watch out, I'm just gonna these up. And in any event, she was saying, you know, really, a lot of it's just about what you have too. Um, now, I don't remember if she chopped these further. I'm gonna actually run my knife through them a little bit more because um, I like onion, but not everyone, including you, like a big hunk of onion. And green onions are milder and they have a very different taste. But I'm just gonna cut them a little bit smaller, um, so so that you're not bothered by it. At all. Thank you. You're welcome. I try to please. All right. So let me get this in there. All right. So then what I'm going to have you do, and you can move, I'm going to do a little shifting. So can okay. you, um, actually, we'll leave this can here. Nope. This nope. Not yet. I'm going to do a little shifting here so I can make it the sauce ready. Is I'm going to move this stuff over. One second. And I'm going to move the bowl over here. And then if you would, Please try to, as gently as you can, um, mix it. And I'm going to give you a spoon that I think will work well for that. So let me... Should be amusing. I'll toss this all over creation. Oh, good. good thoughts. I would actually... So I'm trying to also avoid the noise. So try this. Good. And can I show you what I would do? I would literally just... And you, you don't have to do it quick. Just see what I'm doing here. Oh, whoopsie. Sorry. Here, I'll show you what I'm doing in case anyone else runs into this too. I'm just going to go down and just bring it up and just do it slowly. There is no rush. It's going to take me a while to get the Cut. sauce until it's more evenly distributed. Just saying it would be easier with a bigger bowl, but yeah, I know. just saying. And if I didn't believe so optimistically that things would work out, that would have happened. All right, so now I'm going to make um, the dressing that goes over. Now, one of the things she does say right off the bat, which is great advice, and I'm gonna be, and I don't have one of those fan. We don't have one of those fancy like Vitamix, you know, mixers or even the power bullets. We just have your handy old. What would you just a stand mixer like or what are you? These, blender. That was the blender. That's right. I I I always say I use them interchangeably, and they're not I interchangeable. I this that. is just your typical blender. Um, so that's what I'm using. But she does say so that your blender will work more efficiently, no matter which one you have. Put the liquid ingredients first and then put the solid ingredients. So 
for our liquid ingredients, and I'm going to push this back up so I can see them. For our liquid ingredients, we are gonna have the juice of two lemons, so let me get those squeezed in there. I think it's pretty well mixed. Okay, whenever you think it's set, you can stop. And this is, and I think we've talked about this before on, on the stream, the, I love the citrus juicers. They just make such easy work of juicing. And I know that can stay there. And I feel like we use them, whoopsie, it's squirting. We use them whether it's in cooking or with drinks. It just, you can just leave the spoon in there. Okay. It just does a great job. It makes it so much easier. And of course, um, you always want to turn your fruit or whatever you're squeezing upside down. You can get juice out of there, but you won't get the full juice unless you turn it upside down. Um, plus, it'll actually squirt more at you if you do it that way. So it's really good to do that. And then you see how I flipped my wrist? You always want to do that little flip because that makes sure that any, oh, yikes. That yeah. makes sure that any of the juice that's resting in the bottom gets out. Now that is a lot of lemon juice, so hopefully this will all work out for us. Okay, so we have the juice of one lemon, and we're also going to have a quarter cup of olive oil, which I forgot to get out. So how, gonna grab how many lemons was it? Two. Okay. So a quarter cup of olive oil. Get a measuring cup. It's funny, as much as I try to be prepared, I always feel like I miss a couple things. So. All right, so let me get my quarter cup. Okay. By the way, if you are watching this, I'd love to know what olive oil you like. Um, I know there's been a lot of stories done about olive oils that are really not what they're supposed to be. They're not really extra virgin. And I know one of the ones that has always rated well and done well in any of the tests, making sure they really are extra virgin olive oil, is from California Olive Ranch. Um, and that's probably my go-to. That's one, and I feel like it's fairly priced and I think it has great flavor. So that's my normal go-to for my extra virgin olive oil. You know what makes oil. extra virgin olive oil yes. extra virgin? It's the first press. So extra virgin is the first press of the olives. Yeah, and then is that true? Mm -hmm, subsequent presses deliver the regular... Then it's not virgin. Yeah, it's not virgin anymore. Subsequent ones deliver the just the olive oil, and then there's even a light olive oil. Now, I'm not really sure what, how, yeah. like, how light olive oil comes to be. Like that I'm not really sure about. If you know, please please message below. All right, so we have the two lemons, the olive oil. Now I'm gonna get the rice vinegar, another ingredient I meant to get out that I did not. Um, rice vinegar is a great vinegar, it's a great all-purpose vinegar because it's just not as puckery as other ones, um, which is one of the things I think that makes it really usable. And that's two tablespoons, so I'm gonna get the measures. And it, you know, it's obviously most often used in Asian dishes, but does not need to be just used in Asian dishes. So we have more pucker, but of course, rice vinegar is less puckery, so that's, that's good. So we have our lemon juice, our rice vinegar, our olive oil, and then um, those are our liquids. So then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting some garlic, shallot, and um, some chives. Oh, I forgot to put the, did I forget to put the chives in there? Yeah. I did forget to put the chives in there. Oh, okay, I gotta add one more thing to our, um, our, our salad mixture, and that was chives. So let me get that, and I'll, use, I'll put some of them in there and some of them in the dressing. So I'll give you something to do, something else give to do Give me something there. else to mix. Yep. So I'm just gonna chop these up to go into the salad. What do you do about, is that, what is that, basil? Do you put basil on? Basil goes in the dressing. I guess that would make sense, right? Yeah. Basil is going to be one of the big flavors in our dressing. Isn't that, is that the original Green Goddess dressing? Basil? I don't think basil was in the original Green Goddess dressing. Oh, yeah, here it is. So, Green Goddess typically containing mayonnaise, sour cream, shirvel. I don't know what that is. Chai, that's, a, um, that's an herb. Anchovy, tarragon, lemon juice, and pepper. So, name those again. So, tarragon, shirvel. So, it, it is. Typically containing mayonnaise, sour cream, yep, chervil, yep, chives, anchovy, 
tarragon, lemon juice, and pepper. Okay, but no basil, so just... Did not, well, um, did not say basil. Okay. So, I just put in the chives because, um, and she does say, if you don't have any chives left over, they don't have, yes, they don't have to go in. So that is if you, if you have it. But now that I have the liquid in there, I did add the chives, I'm gonna put the rest of the ingredients. Now, she actually just throws in the garlic, I thought I had garlic. This was one of those moments. I thought I knew I had garlic, and I thought it was still good. But when I went this morning to go look at it, it had lost its prime. It was like shrunken, and that would have not been good. So I'm going to use some of the garlic um, that I I do for being quick and easy. And um, this is from Gourmet Garden. It's a garlic stir and paste. So I'm just going to squirt some of that in for our garlic paste. And since there's two cloves, I'll give a nice squirt. I love garlic, as my hubby well knows. All right, so I got the garlic in there, and um, and then the small shallot, and she literally pops that in. So I feel like I've got to at least cut it in half, because that just seems like a lot of work. Um, shallots are those smaller onions that are purpley, and they have, um, I don't know, they're just a great flavor. I'm just going to do it in quarters. Purpley a word? It is a word, purpley. And they have great flavor though. So, but you know, if you don't like shallots or if you can't find shallots, put another onion in, but just make sure it's small because that is definitely on the shallot wor world, a smaller shallot, the size that I just showed there. So the last thing I'm going to be putting in are some um, nuts. Now she says walnuts, cashews are not of choice. That was another oopsie. I thought I had walnuts. I usually have walnuts. I did not. So today we're going to be trying it with pecans, which is kind of a different, That'd but we're going to try it. But what's nice is that adds some good oils and it adds um, some protein in there. So I dumped those in. That's a quarter cup. And then lastly, it's going to be a cup of basil, a cup of spinach, um, a teaspoon of salt, and some nutritional yeast. Now, I will say nutritional yeast is not something that I have or carry. And I thought about getting some, but I know I'm not gonna use it and I don't wanna be wasteful. And if I'd seen my niece who is vegan, I would have asked to get some, but she's away right now, so I can't get that from her. Um, and she did say in the video, like if you don't have it, leave it out. So uh, it just I think nutritional yeast is what I think a lot of vegans use instead of Parmesan. So it does add a little bit of that flavor. So. I could try putting some Parmesan in here. I'm just not, because she did say just leave it out. So I'm gonna put my teaspoon of salt in there. And then I'm gonna get my cup of basil. And this does not need to be chopped. It can just be torn off. So I have a bunch of beautiful basil here. So I'm just going to tear off enough to make like a cup. You know you can never go wrong with Parmesan, right? Yep. That's about a cup. I might do just one more. And then I don't have spinach. That was the other oopsie. There were three oopsies today. It was the walnuts. It was, what was the other one? Oh, the garlic and then the spinach. But we do have some kale. Um, and the reason is we always have spinach, but I thought I'd order. Well, I used it yesterday. No, but that's okay. I thought I'd ordered more. That was, the, no, there isn't. I Trust me, okay. I checked. So we're going to use some, some kale because it's green and it says about a cup. I know kale has obviously a different flavor, but I like kale. So I kind of also feel like while these recipes are used what you have. So if you have another green, you know, you can use that. So I've got everything in here. Now I'm gonna mix it up. And let me just make sure I have all, just leave that there, that's my trash bag. Um, so let me just make sure there's so lemons, olive oil, rice vinegar, garlic, shallot, chives. I put in the pecans, basil, spinach, salt, because I didn't have yeast. So now I'm going to put this and get it blended up and see how, how well that happens. Do not use this often. All right, let's give it a whirl. This is going to be loud, right? It will be loud. So, brace yourselves. Um.
Well, it, I will say even my cheapy blender did the trick. Look at that gorgeous color. Yeah. It looks really nice. It looks like my shirt. <laughs> it does. I'm going to scooch some of this over here because I want this to look better here. So I'm going to get in. Just tidy this up just a little bit. I'm going to keep this out because I might need this for later. There we go. Let's tidy up my workspace a little bit. So did you watch, I know you don't have TikTok, but so how did you watch this then? So what's interesting is you can watch a lot of, um, if they go viral, you, you can't just see any video that see is on TikTok, YouTube. but but what happens is it kind of comes up on YouTube yeah. okay. or through, um, if you do a Google search. So that's kind of how it comes. So I just want to take a peek at this sauce. Let's see. Wow. Hard to, here, let me get, let me get this a second. Um, okay, let me just do the webcam a second so you can kind of see. I know the color isn't going to be great, but you can see. Oh, that's good. Looks like a nice. And I just want to take a little taste. Oh, it's good. It's a bit lemony. That's pretty good. But those are pretty big lemons. But it does taste good. You know what make it better? Parmesan. Yep. <laughs> What a surprise. So then also, oh, can you move the it back to camera scene? Thank you. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pour, this is where it's gonna be really fun. I'm just gonna pour that all on, because it all goes on. And I'm going to mix, start mixing, and then I'm gonna let you finish mixing while I start on the eggs. So then you just mix. I'll, I'll mix. I'm going to start the mixing okay. and then I'll let you finish the mixing. Because part of me wants to see like how it's going. Well, it smells really good. It smells a bit oniony from everything. Okay, so I started mixing. Andy's going to finish mixing. You just want to mix it until it's well incorporated. Okay. I'm going to move this over a little bit for you. And I'm going to start on the eggs. Nope. Nope. Okay. Just give me a second. Okay. okay. All right, so for the eggs, now I love eggs. I don't know if you love eggs, but they are one of my favorite things that I could not live without. Like I, I'm the kind of person that cannot have oatmeal in the morning. I know you have oatmeal, you do I overnight oats. Um, and I know a lot of people that love oatmeal and I love oatmeal, like I think it's delicious, but even oatmeal doesn't sit with me as much as protein does in the morning. So I have an egg every morning. Um, I love, I mean, I love them in all different ways. They're just one of my favorite, favorite foods. So the idea of these pesto eggs was great. And I wanted to add a spin that I do with, it's not pesto, but something else that's similar to pesto and has so much flavor. So I'm actually going to be making three different kinds of these special eggs. Um, the first two I'm going to make have pesto. And I was noticing, not in the original um, pesto egg TikTok video, the original pesto egg TikTok video had pesto, like a regular pesto. Um, and of course it's best for it to be homemade pesto or pesto from, I know, um, actually this one is Wegmans, but Wegmans has fresh pesto that they have out that's even better than their jarred one, but their jarred one's pretty good. And, um, but this is just what we had on hand. But then I love buying different kinds of pestos. Um, this one is a hot and spicy pesto, and we love hot and spicy. And it's just called Simply Pesto by Delalo. And so it's got red peppers, and it's very yummy. So I thought, oh my goodness, like this would be good to try. But in the original one, it's green pesto, you know, basil pesto. Um, and then you basically are frying your egg in the pesto, that's the oil. You wanna make sure your hot, your heat is not too high because it'll burn, it's olive oil. Olive oil does not have a high smoke point. And so if you get it too hot, it's going to burn and it's not gonna have as good a flavor. So you do wanna watch your heat with this. But the, um, then you put it on, on in the video, sourdough toast, as well as um, ricotta. I think her, hers was ricotta and avocado. So for me, that just seemed like a lot going on there. So what I'm gonna do for my version of pesto eggs is I'm gonna be using a sourdough toast I'm going to be using ricotta for the basil pesto and for the 
spicier pesto. Um, and then I'm gonna be making my other version of pesto eggs with something else that is super yummy and very much um, trending at this point in all sorts of forms. Um, and that is um, ch it's called uh, crunchy chili foil. And so I have a version, I have two versions, one I haven't used yet, but the other one that I'm currently using um, that's really good and that's gonna go over avocado on the toast. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and this is what I'm gonna give you a job for watching, is right. I need to get my toast ready. So. Toast good to have a job. Yes, it's good to have a job. So these two are gonna go in okay. when they are nicely browned. Um, please take them out. And then you can put this one in and get it nicely browned. Okay. And then just put two on one plate and one on the other. I will divide them once we finish them. Please, right. So, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get both of my pans, because I'm making, um, I'm making them at the same time. I'm gonna get both, both of my pans on. Actually, I'm gonna use the back of the Takes me 20 minutes to turn on the stove. You do it like in three seconds. So I'm getting both of my pans going. And again, I don't want it to be too hot. The other one I'm going to be using, in fact, I'll put it down here, is, oops, wait a second. It's very good bread. Is called, it's a chili, uh, it's a chili oil. Um, and not so much crispy, but it's lot sauce. And this one is actually a vegan all-purpose chili oil sauce. This ha actually is mushrooms in it too. Um, and when I tell you the smell, oh, it's so good. I want you to come smell this because I don't know if you've smelled it before. Then the other one I'm using um, is simply pesto. It's hot and spicy. And then just oh, wow. our Wegmans one. So we're going to do one with so an, Asian, an Asian twist. Okay. I'm sorry. When, I'm so done, my, when these are done, I put them on the plate. Right there, and then, like, yep. Okay, so I can tell this is getting warm. I'm going to turn it down just a tad because, again, I don't want it to be too warm. And I'm going to get my pesto in the pan. My eggs are ready. And so you just put one tablespoon of pesto per egg. So I got my red pepper. Get my green pepper. And if it seems too hot, you want to Turn down your heat a little. And then in the other pan, I'm putting this um, all-purpose chili oil. There we go. And since these are getting a little warmer than this, I'm actually gonna switch them because that must be one of them is run hotter. As we've talked about in our streams, um, not as happy. Okay, not as happy about my burgers. I feel like they run a little weirdly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread each of them a little bit so that it's a nice spot to put the egg. And I'll show you from time to time, bring it over so you can see. And then this one, spread that a little. I'm going to break the eggs right on top. Go. Oh, cool. So you can imagine like it's adding so much flavor to the egg. And then I'm going to put the lid on all of these. That's going to help it cook gently. Cook gently, yet still. Um, Get those whites cooked. So then I just put a lid on. We're gonna let those cook. And of course, I you know for anyone that does not like runny eggs, I'm so sorry. I'm so oh sorry. God, I'm so sorry for that. Con Isn't it smell good? So I'm so sorry for that condition if you don't like runny eggs. But runny eggs because then when the toast happens. So is any of the toast ready yet? You tell me. Is that yes. Dark yeah. For you? It's good. It's totally good. Let's go. I got it. I got it. Let me do it. I'm supposed to take it. We're good. Yes. Okay, get the other two in. And while you're doing well, that... You another two or just one? Two. I mean one. I'm sorry. Not two. One. So then while... Whoops. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread some um, ricotta on each of these. You guys can't see the... 
Our dog is. She's there. She's ready. Directly underneath, in case there's just any in case mistakes. anything. And then I'm actually going to see how they are. Now they aren't quite cooking like I would like them to, so I'm going to turn up that heat just a little bit. It's cooking a little better, but I'm going to turn up a little bit. I'm going to then season the ricotta with some salt, pepper, and um, red pepper flakes. Although on the spicy one, I'm not, because the spicy one's going to have plenty of spice. So I'm just going to put pepper flakes on the, the basil. See how they're doing? You don't do one is taking a little longer to cook than I would like. It's usually, so I have a flipper. I tend to flip my eggs. In fact, I think that's what I'm just going to do. I'm going to flip them because flip them. that one is not even doing that. That is so interesting. Isn't it interesting how this one cooked totally differently from the other one? So I need to get this guy going because he is not cooking quick enough. I'm going to turn it up there on that and I'll take this one out. I just love how when you're real life cooking, stuff happens. Stuff that you really aren't expecting or hoping. Mm -hmm. This one's going. Oh, it's beautiful. Actually, I think that one like looks like it's about ready. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to show you why this one's finishing. You can see that this one looks beautiful, um, and that unfortunately our toast isn't quite ready for that. So I'm going to hold this here to wait till the toast is ready. I'll keep it warm. See how our other egg is doing. Oh, the other egg's doing much better. So, pardon. Get that flipped. And the other one is ready. So I'm gonna get then, this is the red pepper one. You can see all that beautiful, spicy pesto. And this one's almost ready. There we go. You can see that there. What do you do with the, uh... The avocado? Avocado is going on that toast that we're waiting on. Oh, that's right. See how yeah. it's pretty hot. Yeah. So let me put this. This one did not turn out quite as pretty, but it'll still be yummy. Okay. And I'm also going to get these salted. A little bit of pepper. And on the pesto one, I'm going to put a little bit also extra red pepper and then for me the pesto already has basil of course but i thought it might be nice on this spicy one to add some just torn basil i thought that would be yummy so i'm that's what i'm doing close. okay all right so these two you can see they look beautiful i know the color isn't as good here um but those are going to be ready and then let me see how i think it's ready it's fine it's fine there we go. So I will take that. Thank you so much for toasting. And I'm going to put on here. That's good. I'm going to put on here the avocado. I already mashed some fresh avocado. Just put it there. All right. Now I want to see it season this avocado for sure. Let me get that seasoned. Put some salt, some pepper, and get my chili egg that I had. Um, I'll just use this. All right. Let's see that. Get a little that chili sauce on there. That got a little burnt, I want to say. So the chili. That one chili sauce, I think, and it was a little bit more, you needed a little more gentle heat. All right, so we've got both of these going, and then what I'm gonna do, and I have my knife here, is I'm gonna cut each of these in half so that um, we could try all of them. All right. And because of where the yolks are, um, I'm going to cut them strategically so that there can be some yolk sharage uh, for both people. So this one, I'm going to put that there. So there's the pesto one. This one, because I'm going to kind of go, this one, yeah, I'm going to go side. I'm not going to go the usual, like, fat ways because I feel like we're going to miss that yolk. So there's the pesto. Put that, that back up there. I'll take the non-pretty plate. And then this one is... There you 
go. Okay. Let me get that stuff one second out. Let's see. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get some salad on there first. You're thinking. I like your thinking. There we go. Let me get a little salad on here. Yeah, this is going to be for you to go take a pick. Um, um, just on the table, because then you can be looking down. There you go. Just look, just do it like looking down on top of it. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to put some salad on mine. And I think we're going to need a knife and fork. See the salad? Looks yummy. Okay. I was thinking as we're making this that, you know what I think would be really good in that dressing also? Um, and maybe, you know, use a little less olive oil and add to that the um, avocado because avocado is green and I think that would be really delicious. Okay, so you can see here, these are the ones we're going to be trying. And I'm going to put the camera back up here. All right. So will you show that to the camera? Thank you. I can't see. Here, I'll, I'll help with that. There we go. Show you. Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, that looks, that looks really good. Okay, so come on over and come taste it with me. Here's your knife and fork. Here's yours. What should we try first? Can you do the um, salad first? What's that? Yeah, let's do salad. Okay. Try the salad. I've already had this. Oh. Mmm. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Super bright with the the lemon juice especially. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely taste, I mean, I can't really specifically taste the rice wine vinegar, but obviously that makes it bright as well. But the lemon, you can really taste. Um, mm. But the Parmesan would actually be good at it. Mm -hmm. But it's like a really great, that'd be a great like summer salad bring to yeah. a cookout. If you're having this with ribs, it's, such, it's almost like, and the nature of it is kind of like coleslaw without the mayonnaise. And so it, but you have coleslaw kind of gives you a good counterpoint to like ribs and rich meats, if you're eating meats. This would be awesome with that. Which one are you gonna go to? Um, I'm gonna try the spicy one first. All right. Mm. I'm gonna go this one first. Okay. So you're trying the Asian one first. No, this is the pesto. Oh, that's the pesto one, sorry. Okay. I'm trying the spicy one. Mm. Mm. That's a spicy one. Yeah, this one is. Oh. Oh my God, that's so good. Oh, it really is good. The creamy ricotta. First of all, I was dipping, remember I was dipping that garlic knot oh, wow. into that spicy pesto yesterday? The spicy pesto that I have there is really spicy. And so I was putting a little too much on this piece of bread and I was like, it was fine. But I was like, ooh, that had some heat. But the ricotta really balances the heat. The ricotta tastes so good with that toast. I'm telling you, the, the, pesto, the, the pesto one's awesome. Do the pesto one. Mm, that was really good. And what a nice brunch option for something different. I mean, obviously, this could be dinner or lunch also, but this would be such a nice brunch. Mm, mm. <laughs> so the basil pesto one... For me, it's like total comfort food. Yeah, so. I love basil pesto. So for me, there's nothing, you know, I did put a little red pepper, but there's nothing really spicy about it. You could always leave it off. But with that, with the um, ricotta and that crunchy toast, and I do think. I like, I like both, but I like the, just the, the regular pesto. Yeah. But what I like is having, if you, so I think why they chose the sourdough toast was because you wanted to have something that has more body. Yeah. And more oomph to it. You could obviously do it in anything, but I think it really trying to get the sourdough toast. I think it really adds to the flavor. Um, yeah, those are both really good. And then want to try this one? Mm -hmm. And then we have the the Asian chili paste on the avocado. That's gonna be good. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's really good. Totally different, but really good. That's more bite to it. More spice. Wow. Wow, that's really good. Isn't that good? So the Asian one, remember, there are so many chili oils. I'll show you the one I haven't tried yet, and I will have to let you know when we do try it, how it is. This is the other one I've gotten. And 
because uh, some of them are they're really known for their crunchiness this is called crunchy garlic but it really has like this it's, an, it's chili oil so there's spice to it but it really has like this umami flavor that's wonderful um but that is awesome and what i you know what i love is like to me these are just as elegant if you're serving them or eating them as like an eggs benedict mm -hmm. but so much easier so you're having company or you want to make oh my gosh you have father's day coming up you want to make something special for your spouse your partner you know doing something like this really makes it special and it's so easy and you could there's so many pestos out there you could try so many different things so what's your favorite Rank well, I've had this already. I've not had it with avocado on toast, but I've had it just as an egg. Um, I love that. Like, that gives the Asian Which kick. Which one was that? That was the last one? Yeah, but yeah. I would have to... Uh, it's a tie. It's a tie because I love spice. So I love that that one has some spice in it, but this is comfort food, the regular pasta. So I would go probably the regular, mm. the Asian one, and then the spicy one. So good. So try these. Let us know. Awesome. If you try them, what you think? Great. Yeah, and let us know if you tried different pestos and what pesto that was, um, and just share it. I think the best thing about TikTok or any of those, the viral, is just the sharing of recipes, sharing of yummy food. Are you gonna show a bite? Let me do it. Yeah, a perfect bite. Excellent. Um, I just love that whole idea of the community, the, the food community, just sharing. Oops. Uh oh. Sorry, friends. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. <laughs> So I'm um, coming up. So we have some things coming up. So Tuesday, we are back to a cocktail stream. As, as you guys might have remembered, we did a new stream this past week where we, where we were trying a, um, a takeout place. Uh, it was sushi. It was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And we did a review. Uh, and we'll do that again. I'm not sure if it's going to it might be a month. Um, but if I mix it up and decide I want to do it in a couple of weeks, we'll give you a heads up on Twitter. But um, next week is back to cocktails, and we are making, or Andy's going to be leading this one. It's something I like, so I'm so excited about it. And it's um, gin and tonics. So summertime is great for gin and tonics. They're refreshing. They're delicious. But the one he's making, um, he's going to make me a classic one because you can't do this without, like, doing oh, really? it. Oh, yes. Because I, I, I like it, but I love classic gin and tonics. I think they're really refreshing and delicious. But he, you figured out a recipe, and you can tell the story on Tuesday, for an elevated gin and tonic. So if you want something more schmancy, something that's a little different that impress your guests, be sure to join us on Tuesday night. It's all gin and no um, tonic. <laughs> it's just a gin shop now. Um, so that is on Tuesday. And then next weekend, um, I had to delay because of COVID this stream, which is um, my another grandma recipe. You know my grandma has amazing recipes, great baker, and it's the one I talked about last month, the seven-year cake. So that will be on Sunday, and it'll probably be on the earlier side too, like around 12 or 12.30. Right now the schedule says 12.30, but if I change anything, I will let you know. So Just thank this. you for joining us. Thank you for cooking. Let us know what you are cooking and what you are excited about and doing all the time. And until we eat again, have a great rest of your weekend, and have a great Memorial Day weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday and Sunday, hopefully. See ya. Yeah.